In this video, we're going to learn about form validations. So let's go into Visual Studio directly. And from the last video, we were working on the edit form and form submissions. And we know that the forms data context, which is also called the model object, is the server object. The type of the server object is the server class here. When the form needs to be submitted, what we need to do is we need to validate each one of these properties of the server object. So therefore, what we need to do is to use data annotations on the server class. So let's go to the definition of the server class here, which we define it right here under the models folder. We have the server class here, and we just need to use data annotations. Data annotations is not part of Blazor, it's part of C-sharp. So for example, we need to say that the name and the city is actually a required field for the server class. So for that, we can use C sharp attribute, and we can just say required. And right now we see a red squiggly line. That means we don't have the namespace yet. So we can do control dot to import namespace, which is from the component model dot data annotations. For city, we can also say required. It's a line because it's a Boolean value, it always has a value. A default value is false, so we do not need to specify any annotations. Let's take a look at the documentation from Microsoft to know a little bit more about data annotations. All right, this is learn.microsoft.com. And we're looking at data annotation namespace here. You can see that what we used is the required attribute, right? It specifies the data field is required. And you can see that we have so many different attributes here that we can use. For example, we can use compare attribute in order to compare two properties. And one of the other very commonly used is the display attribute, which uh, can provide a different name of the attribute or different label of the attribute. We have the string length, which help us to limit the, the length of the string. Right? So there, there are different things we can use for more information, I suggest you to come here and read the documentation. In our case, we can simply just use the required field validation on both of these fields. And once we annotate our model class here, then we come back to our edit form. And in order to make the edit form validate the model object here, right, or the data context here, we need to use a couple of components at least. One of the most important thing here is the data annotation validator. So we just need to put it here. This tells the edit form to actually try to validate the model object based on the data annotations on the model class. And then we need to specify how we want to spit out the error message. One of the easiest way is to use the validation summary component here. And all you need to do is just put it here. Right? And then the summary will appear on the top. Sometimes you want to have summary appear both on the top and at the bottom. So in that case, you can copy this and paste it at the, the bottom, for example, right here. Right? In our case, we don't have to do that. So let's just do this. And then uh, another thing we need to do is instead of using on submit here, we need to use on valid submit. So delete original, and then we're going to use on valid submit. You can also handle the on invalid submit to do some extra processing when the data is invalid. But when you use data annotations along with data annotations validator here, the validation automatically kicks in. So you don't have to handle the invalid submit event. So here we can just use on valid submit, and we're going to connect to the original submit event handler defined right here. Okay, let's give it a try by running the application. All right, let's go to manage servers and let's change the first one. Uh, suppose that we're going to delete the name and click on update. You can see that validation automatically kicks in. The data is not actually updated. So uh, let's prove that it's true. Close this. You can see the server name is not actually updated and come back. We can still see server one. Right, so suppose we're going to delete both this and this and click on update. We have both error messages shows up on the top. And this is from the validation summary component. Another nice thing you notice here is that the border of the input component actually changed to red. 
and this indicates there are problems with the field. Let's uh, update the server name. Let's actually close this and try to do it again. And this time we make sure that something is actually changed and change this to offline. Click on update and click on close. Now we don't see the server one anymore because we changed the city. So we're going to make sure that we don't change the city. Let's go back uh, to edit number two, server number two. So I'm not going to mess with the city now. So click on online and click on update and click on close. You can see that everything is changed correctly. So this means that our data annotation validation kicks in properly. The validation error message is showing up on the top correctly. There's just one more thing. Sometimes you get a requirement where uh, users want to see the validation error messages right beside each field. In Blazor, that is also possible. So let's try to do that here. So here, because we have for each row, we have two columns, we can add another column, which just contains the potential error message here. So here we can use the COL class here, which means the, the width is going to be automatic. And we can use another control. There is a control that is called validation message. And there is a for attribute here. We can use lambda expression to specify which field is to be validated. So here I'm going to say goes to server dot name because we are validating the server name here. That's why this validation message points to the server name. And we're going to copy and paste this two times. So this one and uh, this one doesn't need to be validated because it's a checkbox. It always has a value. So we don't need to worry about that. Uh, we just need to change this to city and that's it. And let's rerun our application and we come back over here and let's say we delete this and click on update. Now you can see the error message shows both in the validation summary component as well as in the validation message component right here. Right. And if I delete this, you can see the city field is required shows up right here to the right of the field. So just to summarize, in order to provide validation, you need to do a few things, right? First of all, you need to go to the definition of the model class here, and then you use data annotations, which is a feature of C sharp. Right? Just use that to decorate each one of those properties. It doesn't have to be required. Just refer to the documentation according to your requirement. What you need to do, just use that data annotations. And secondly, come back to the edit form here. Uh, we need to use on valid submit in order to handle the form submission event. And then one of the most important thing is that we use the data, data annotations validator in order to trigger the validation. And last but not least, we need to decide whether we want to just use validation summaries or we want to display error message for each field or both. So in this case, we're using both the validation summaries as well as validation message for each field. All right, that's everything I want to cover. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.